Trees in Prince Albert National Park fight. Fight for essential nutrients, for survival and supremacy. They are all different, but highly competitive. The design of conifers is brilliant. Their boughs are sloped so that snow can slide off, minimizing winter damage. Right down to their particular needles and seeds, they have all adapted to fit this ecosystem. The tiny needles are waxy coated to withstand the intense cold and drought of winter. The reduced leaf area lessens water loss by evaporation and the stomata or breathing pores are located in a groove on the underside of the needles. By not losing too many needles at once, conifers conserve energy and nutrients and can photosynthesize at temperatures as low as minus six degrees. Conifers have a further defense against the rigors of the north if the bark is damaged, a sticky resin quickly covers the wound, preventing attack by bacteria and fungi. The trees have even adapted to fire, a natural part of the cycle in the boreal forest. Jack pines have seeds that are released after fires. The seeds then colonize an area after the fire and the trees all grow up um, at the same time, so they're very even aged stands. Aspen trees will often grow in an area where a single tree ha is a parent, more or less, to all the rest of those trees. And because it's a system of cloning, they're connected by root suckers. So after a fire or where there's been a major, major disturbance, you might have 100,000 of these tiny little aspens popping up all over the place. And the aspens have their own solution to the problems of ultraviolet radiation. When we're looking at the side of an aspen tree exposed to the sun, we'll often find that the trunk is coated with a very fine chalky powder or bloom as it's called. You can actually brush this off with your hands. This is like a sunscreen. It reflects the sun and helps keep the tree uh, that much cooler. There's a fascinating relationship between the roots of the trees, of these coniferous trees, and fungi that live underneath the ground. Over the millions of years of evolution, it seems that the fungi have, in close proximity to the roots, have actually grown, started to grow in amongst the roots of the conifers and wrap themselves around in sheaths. The roots then benefit from this relationship because the fungus can take up more nutrients than the root itself could, you know, all its, all its own. And in turn, the fungus will get some basic and simple sugars from the, the tree via the root. So it's this relationship that actually helps the trees to um, colonize areas and to thrive because of this so-called mycorrhizal association. Myco being the mushroom or fungus part of it and rhizal being the root of the tree. So it's a symbiotic relationship. There are many examples throughout the forest and this is one of the fascinating ones that helps the trees to, to thrive. You know, fungi just never get enough credit for their role in the ecosystem. Some of them can come up through the ground virtually overnight. You know, it doesn't take, you know, 24, 48 hours maybe for them to pop. And what we're looking at is just the fruiting body, just the reproductive structures. What's really amazing, and we'll never get a footage of it, are all the fungal fingers that spread out underneath the forest floor and link this forest with the rest of the, um, the organisms. Over 100,000 kilometers of these fungal fingers may weave through a cubic meter of soil. Whether it's the aspen protecting itself against ultraviolet radiation or the lichens absorbing radioactive fallout, all of these ecosystems, the lakes and bogs, fungi and beaver dams, can provide us with warning signals of environmental problems. The park is an ecological pulse. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.